Now, I want to apologize that I haven't been putting out a lot of content lately. It's, you know, it's been kind of hard to do a lot of things around here because it's been nonstop snowing. We've set some records this year. Um, Reno, where I don't, I'm gonna have to look into how much snow we actually got, but we've been getting snow practically every weekend, so it's really hard to go out and drive the Camaro and the Mustang around. They're not really snow-worthy vehicles. The truck is, but, you know, not that exciting. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark. That behind me, that is my 2018 Camaro SS1 LE. For the last couple months that I've owned this thing, I have looked over the car and I've looked at some things and I found a couple of things that the last owner of the car paid for, so I don't have to. So let's talk about today. I'm gonna to show you what I have found and what I plan on doing later in the future. At a recent Cars and Coffee, I finally got to meet my car twin. Um, as far as I know, he's the only SS1 LE in blue in Reno and we met up and I got to see what his car looks like. His is a bit more stock than mine. So I wanted to go over what I saw. The first thing that I did run into is that if you look at the front of the car here, the emblem right here, mine is black. His emblem is gold. And it's also for the same of the rear of the car. Now I do like the black emblems way better than the gold. I don't like the gold that much just for the fact that the gold, it really doesn't match anything else on the car. The only thing that's gold on there is the two emblems. So now that it's black, it goes with the theme of the one LE where everything's blacked out. So I think it should be black. I like it. Looking around, it seems to be about a hundred bucks. I'll put a total up here so that you guys can keep track of how much that the last guy spent for me. So some of you guys might already know, I like to go to the track. I like to do track days. And one of the things that you have to have at a track day is a tow hook. So the last guy already has a tow hook. He bought it for me. I didn't have to pay for it. I found it in the trunk of the car while I was looking around. And these tow hooks are about 125 bucks. So we'll add that to our total up there. The only problem I really have so far is that in the back of the car, there's no place to put a tow hook. So I'm definitely gonna have to figure something out. So in case I go off the track straight, I will be able to be pulled out backwards instead of trying to figure out how to pull me out that way. Now, I will occasionally have to work on this car. If anything, I bought the new wheels and tires for it. So I'm gonna have to be lifting it up in the air. The last guy bought lifting blocks for this thing. Apparently there is a problem with either the strength of the pinch welds or the fact that they're really recessed up in there underneath the trim. So it makes it kind of hard to get a jack in there. So these lifting blocks, they, you know, lower the lifting point a little bit down. They're nice. You don't really see them unless you take a look underneath. But those things are about 90 bucks and I don't have to pay for them. They look nice when I, and they're helpful when I'm working on my car. So we'll add that up to the total as well. So now at the back of the car, you can see that I don't have factor taillights. I went through before and I took off the covers and take a look to see what these are. These are made by a company called V-Land and I kind of like them. They look pretty good. I do like the factory ones that come on the car, so I probably wouldn't have changed them out. I would have kept the stock ones, but because these are already there and I do like them, I'm not going to change them out. And they look pretty cool when they come on and they are about $310. Also in the rear, we have the third brake light that's been changed out. That's about 50 bucks we can add to the total as well. All right, so I'm inside the car now, and this is probably the one thing that he installed that kind of annoys me the most is I'm in a 1SS. When the 1SS, you don't get the ambient lighting, which is you get lights on the door, you get lights in the floor wells, and you also get light on your cup holder. And you're able to change the lights to whatever you want. You can change it to color, you can change it by driving mode, but all this guy did was he went through and he changed the lights, he installed lights on the floor and he installed the lights on the door. So if we take a look here, you can see there's the little bar right there. That light's gonna come on here. Let me start the car. So, and as I have it set up right now, it's blue. But when you do the job, you're supposed to also change this light out and the light has not been changed out. So this one just stays white no matter what color I choose. So if we pick red, nothing happens. But on the door, they turned red and also on the floor, you can't see it because it's light out. Now, it doesn't really bother me that he didn't install the cup holder, but it does bother me that he didn't change the one out on the screen here in the middle because I, it doesn't change color. It doesn't match with the rest of it. And I'm definitely going to have to change that out here soon. Now, the ambient light is neat and I play with it and I because I have it, I turn it on. But there's no way I'm going to go out and spend the money on this. This kit to install in the car is $700. I don't, I don't feel like $700 is worth having a couple lights in the car that change color. Now for the one thing that the guy spent the most money on that I enjoy the most has to be the exhaust. He spent a lot of money on this and it sounds good.
Now, I went and take a look. It is an AWE Touring Catback Exhaust. These things retail for about $2,100. I think it's a little, probably a little bit more pricier than I wanted to spend, but it sounds really good. It doesn't drone at all. I love the way it sounds. The only thing I wish is that it had kept the valve system in there so that I could quiet it down when I wanted to. There are a few situations here and there where I wish I could, you know, make the exhaust a little bit quieter. Um, more of like starting it up first thing in the morning when I'm in the neighborhood or anything like that. I don't want to be an annoyance, but I do want to still hear my car. All right, so for as a total, the last guy spent about $35. $3,500 or just shy of it on, well, probably with tax, he probably spent more than that, but 3,500 bucks on parts installed on this car that I didn't have to pay for. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do to improve this car? I think the first thing that I'm going to do is probably install some side skirts on here. It looks a little bit empty there. And also with the black splitter in the front, I think it would look good if it had a black side skirt going down the side. Those aren't too expensive, gonna be a couple hundred bucks. I just haven't ordered one yet. I just spent a bunch of money on buying some wheels and I gotta take the tires off the Mustang and put them on there anyway. But other than the side skirts and the new wheels that are gonna go on here for the track use, I don't think I'm really gonna be doing much else in the cosmetic category. I love the way this car looks. The only thing I can think I would want is probably a ZL1 style front bumper. And other than that, I think it looks good. I like the way it looks. I don't really wanna change much. Now, the only real thing that I wanna do about improving the performance of this car is I probably wanna get some adjustable sway bars. As I'm gonna be putting different wheels and tires on here, I'm gonna be adjusting the size as I go. Maybe one day I might try to do some 305 squared, but not today. And the only other thing I think that I'm gonna need for this thing is a supercharger, but I gotta sell the Mustang first.